Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be doing our unit mystery. And this mystery is about elements and their locations on the periodic table. So the question that we're going to be looking at is how does an element's location on the periodic table affect the element's reactivity? Uh, we're going to be looking at four different elements, uh, lithium, sodium, magnesium, and calcium. And if we were to take a periodic table and kind of cut out those elements, these are the particular ones we're looking at. So we have lithium, and then below that is sodium, and below that is potassium. Then next to lithium on the right is beryllium, next to sodium is magnesium, and next to potassium is calcium. And so if we were following that trend again, we've got beryllium and then magnesium and then calcium going all the way down. So it's important that you know where the elements that we're gonna be testing are located on the periodic table and their relation to the other elements that we're gonna be testing. Specifically though, we're looking at the ones that are circled. So we're looking at lithium, sodium, magnesium, and calcium. So we're gonna be making this table so that you can organize all of your observations. The first thing that we're gonna be looking at is just the appearance of each element. So I have lithium right here inside of this uh, little container. And so this is lithium. And now you really can't see a lot of detail here, but that's because uh, it's on top of you know, a layer of oil or something. So uh, that is what lithium looks like. That's pure lithium metal. So kind of what does that look like to you? Make some observations. Uh, this is the element that's directly below lithium. And so this is sodium. So take a look at it. Again, I'll put them side by side maybe so that you guys can kind of see the differences in them. So there you go, that's lithium, and then that is sodium, okay? And then I also have calcium right here. This is a small little piece of calcium and a ribbon of magnesium. So make some observations. What's similar about them? Maybe what's different about them? If you need to pause the video, please do that. All right, so you already made your observations. Now we're gonna be looking at its reactivity with water. So I have approximately, I don't know, maybe 50 milliliters of water inside of a beaker. And I've got a piece of lithium on the left and sodium on the right that's inside of my fume hood. Uh, on the back, remember, we're talking about lithium and sodium. So an element above and an element below on the periodic table. Uh, so record your observations in your table for its reactivity with water. And I also added a little bit of phenolphthalein inside of the solution, which changes color in the presence of a base. So it changes to pink if it's forming a base. Uh, not only that, but we're also going to be looking at the temperature of the solutions after the reaction has stopped. But for now, uh, you'll just be focusing on the observations after it reacts with the water. Okay? I'm going to have to turn on the fume hood though, so it's going to get a little noisy. And I'm also going to have to close the blast door shield thing. So um, anyway, here you go. Here is lithium on the left and sodium on the right. So notice the differences in reactivity, how long the reaction lasts, there are a lot of observations you can be making. So it looks like the sodium reaction is finished and the lithium one is still going on. All right, and so now we're gonna be looking at the temperature of the reaction. So the thermometer is still kind of climbing because the reaction just stopped on both sides. But you can see that on the left, the lithium one, it's under 30 degrees Celsius. And for the sodium one, it is above 35 degrees. You make your judgment call for what that temperature is. 
Okay, so now we're going to repeat the experiment again, this time with calcium and magnesium. So if we're looking at our placement, calcium and magnesium are in a whole other group on the periodic table. They're in the next column over. And notice that they are lower down. So we have magnesium and we have calcium. And again, one is right above and below the other, okay? I have the thermometers inside, and you know, they're about 22 right now, something like that, about 22 or 23 degrees. And I'm gonna add, again, our calcium, which this time it's on the left, and our magnesium ribbon, which is on the right. And yes, just like before, there's phenolphthalein. I'll turn on the light so that you can get a better view, but I might have to speed this up a little bit, so we'll see what happens. So again, we're still looking at water reactivity, and we're also looking at the temperature of the solution. So here goes the calcium, and here goes the magnesium. Something interesting that I just realized is uh, you've got the calcium, which sank to the bottom, and the magnesium, which also sank to the bottom. You can see a little bit, let's see if I can zoom in, that there's some pink forming on the magnesium ribbon. rising still, but for calcium we're above 30, for magnesium we're pretty much the same as we were before. Again, take a look at the difference in color and quality of the solutions also. So um, that pink color is very different than the pink colors for the last two. Again, you can barely see pink starting to form on the magnesium ribbon. Alright, so hopefully you have all of your observations in a nice organized table. And now I want you to discuss and write how do you think the elements place on the periodic table affected how it reacted. So go back and watch those reactions again. Compare lithium and its reaction to sodium and its reaction. And compare that reaction to magnesium and then also to calcium. Okay? Think about what it might mean to be in the same group or the same period or what kind of pattern you may or may not be seeing. After you've done that, answer what questions do you still have, and that's it.